Fine. So we'll start off with uh, Microsoft Excel. So when I talk about Excel, Excel is a software which is meant for the data analysis and the data summarization purpose. Okay. So Word was a software which is meant for the documentation purpose, whereas Excel is a software which is meant for the data analysis and the data summarization purpose. So what do you mean by data analysis? So when you may talk about data analysis is nothing but you have a data, you want to study about that particular data. So something like, you know, you have a sales data. I want to see this particular sales data, how the sales have happened on the each department wise or a particular region wise, a particular trader wise or something. So you want to do some kind of analysis on this. So now I want to know what is the total sales was generated? What is the average sale in a particular region you want to look in? Okay, so we do this particular things of a data analysis okay so i want to know like we have some data over here so we have the sales data i want to see a sales in a particular month what has happened a particular city what was the sale particular region what is the sale so this is a, a software is able to generate this kind of results okay those softwares are called as a data analysis software and not only that you can also do the same data summarization so when i talk about a summarization is we do the calculations okay calculation is again we have some quantity sold so i want to know what is the total sales or i want to see again the sales for a particular region or something so i want to find the total average okay highest or you want to search for some data so okay so you want to do some kind of a calculations yeah so as from a simple calculation to a complex calculation it might be a statistical calculations or it might be a financial calculations or okay any kind of arithmetic calculations can be done very easily with the help of this particular software which is nothing but your excel microsoft excel fine so now to start off with so what happens is when you start excel so you get a screen like this the first screen when you just go to the start menu and say excel so you get this particular option okay so now here we can see when i'm opening this so we get a something called as a blank workbook okay so workbook is uh, the excel file is called as a workbook so it was like this in the case of word the file was called as a documentation in the case of excel the excel file is called as a workbook okay so workbook adequate so you a book where i can uh, store all the data and all these things where i can do the analysis and the summarization on that so when you get into this particular workbook so what happens is unless like your uh, word page which was showing a blank page. Now here what is happening is, it is showing me a, uh, what is talk about rows and columns. So we have this particular vertical section and do also have a horizontal section. So this particular vertical sections, we call it as, the vertical sections are called as columns. Yep. So vertical sections are called as columns, whereas the horizontal section, The horizontal section, we call it as rows. Okay, so we have vertical sections are columns, horizontal sections are rows. So that means here the data is stored in the columns and rows. So, okay, how many columns are there? So how many rows are there? So that is the question arises here. So now, so you can see the columns are identified with what is called it as alphabets, fine, A, then followed with B, C, D, and so on. So every column is given with the English alphabets. So A, B, C, D, and so on. So that is your alphabets. And the rows are identified with numbers. Say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Fine. So how many columns are there? So how many rows are there? So that is the question. Okay. So any guesses? How many columns are there? Around uh, 64,000 something. Uh, around 64,000 um, columns. Okay. Yeah. No, it is 16,384. 16, okay. 684. What is 16,384 columns are there? It's a big number. Okay. okay. 16,000. So you want to check it? I'll just write this. I'll just say one. I'll just say is equal to this plus one. Get it? Here it is. I just say is equal to select this particular cell plus one. So that means select the left cell plus one increment. I just copy this particular formula, just get into the end of this, press enter. 
So you can see the formula is generating the numbers here, and you can see here. So okay, so alphabets we have 26. After 26, the alphabet what happens is so the data goes something like this. So after 26, you can see the 27th column is A, 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 B, A, C. It goes to A, Z, then B, A, B, B. So it goes till Z, Z, then A, 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 B, C. Okay, something. So it goes till X, F, T. That is how the unique name generation, that is the column name. And the number of columns is 16,384 columns are there. Okay, pick number. Okay. That was about the columns. So now the rows are identified with numbers. Okay, so we know English has 26 alphabets, but when it comes to the numbers, there is no end for the numbers. No, we have infinite numbers. So how many rows do you expect this has? This has a finite number of rows. So any guesses how many rows are there? Somewhere nearly 10 lakhs. Uh, somewhere nearly 10 lakhs is almost uh, correct. So it is 10 lakhs, uh, 48,576 rows. So that means we have 10 lakhs 48,000, or it's almost 10 and a half lakh. 10 lakhs 48,576 rows are there in a single sheet. Okay, this is a single sheet. Now you want more than this, you cannot extend, but yeah, you have an option of going for the second sheet. So you can see here, so it says we have a sheet one, okay, but you can also add another sheet further. So if you want to add a second sheet, that means the data is not sufficient, you want to spill over, so you can just hit on this particular plus, you can see there is a second sheet generated. So that means, so okay, again, second sheet will have the same number of rows and the same number of columns. So like when you keep on hitting this particular plus sign, so a new sheet gets generated. Okay, so you can have an infinite number of sheets. There is no restriction on the number of sheets. So I can see the restriction is on your storage space. So how much space you have to store the data. So it, it just depends on that. There is no restriction on the number of sheets. Yep. So this is about your workbook. Excel file is called as a workbook, which I can see is nothing but a collection of worksheet. And worksheet is a collection of vertical section, which you call it as columns and the horizontal sections, which we call it as rows. Fine. So now, here what happens is, when you have a row and a column, so when you have a row and a column, so we have an intersecting point, okay? And this intersecting point, we call it as, we call it this intersecting point between the column and the row, we call this as a cell. Okay, uh, boxes what you're seeing, every box here what you see is nothing but is called as a cell. So now, columns are identified with alphabets, rows are identified with numbers, whereas the cells are identified with a combination of column name and the row number. So that means this cell belongs to the column C and the fifth row. So you can see on that basis, so we have something called as a name box here. So this is called as the name box. So it gives the name of the cell. So, and you can see the name of the cell is given as C5. So that means it belongs to the C column and the fifth row. So the name of the cell is given as the combination of column name and the row number. Clear? So every cell you can see, it says E5. So if I click here, it's B3, say A2, A, B2, or B, C2, say C3 down. Okay, fine, clear? So every cell is identified uniquely. So how many cells are there? Huh? That is the question. So when you talk about how many cells are there in a single sheet, just multiply 16,384 into 10,48,576. So the product of that is the number of cells. Okay, so that means almost a very, very huge amount of data can be stored on a single sheet of Excel. Fine. Yeah. Now, what I can do with this particular Excel? What are the things that you can do in this one? See, one is like, you know, we have something called as an autofill. Okay, so now you want to go for this particular autofilling of the series. Say, example, I want to have some kind of a monthly planner or weekly planner uh, thing. Okay, or I just want to enter the 
um, sales data or the employees data or the transaction IDs, order IDs and all these things. So I want to have a serial number. So one, two, three, four, five. So to be written. So what I do, I'll just enter a serial number, say one. So I just want to have a serial number. So what I do, I just say SLNO, fine. So now in the serial number, I just say, I want to start the serial number from one and I want to increment with plus one, one plus one is two. Now what I want is, I want this particular numbers to be generated. Okay, I want this to be numbers to be generated, a long thing. So in that case, so we, instead of typing this one, two, three, four, five, see if it has to, if I have to generate a serial number up to 10 or 20 or 30, it's fine, we can do a manual work. Just imagine if I have to generate a serial number of hundreds, or I want to generate thousands of, let's like say 1000 or 5000, like I want to generate a serial number. Now typing this manually becomes a very tedious work that really consumes a very long time. Okay, we want an automatic way of doing this particular thing. So in that case, what is that we do is, so they have different ways to fill this particular series. So now one way is I can just do is I can write the first two numbers for the computer. It has to know from where this particular series has to start and what should be the increment of that. So we are telling that, okay, so here we are try telling that, okay, a serial series has to start from one and it has to increment with plus one. So it is going to go with one plus one, two. So now you want to generate this particular series. What we do is, see generally you can see a mouse pointer. Okay, how exactly a mouse pointer is looking in this? When you look into the mouse pointer, it is something like a doctor plus, is it? It is like a doctor plus sign. So white color plus sign, what has been shown over here. So now what I want is, okay, so when I focus on any cell, okay, so we can see what happens is, um, yeah, so when I want to drag, so when it is a doctor plus, okay, when you click on any cell and drag, it does a selection. It does a selection on that particular cells of data. Now you want to move this particular cells. Okay, I want to move this particular data. So what I do is I just select the particular data and you can see in the right round, okay, there is a dark line here. So now when you focus the pointer on that, so you can see the pointer changes. So generally it was like a doctor plus, is it? A white color plus sign. So now you can see it's a four sided arrow. Okay, it is now you can move around. So when you click on this and move, so that is like, you know, you're trying to move that particular data. Okay, so that is how, okay, that is uh, another type of point, pointer. So this appears when you just um, focus on the borders of the selected cell. Okay, when you just point, point this focus on the borders of the selected cell, it changes to four-sided arrow. That means you want to relocate this data somewhere. Clear? Okay. So now I want to fill the series. What I do is I just select this particular sequence of number one and two. And you can see in the right bottom, Okay, there is a small box here. There is a small box here, a square box. And what we'll do is we'll just focus on that box. In the right bottom corner where there is a box, I just focus on it. When you focus on that, what is happening here? It is looking again a plus sign with a black color. By generally it was a white color. So now when you focus, it changes to black color. Okay. Now what you do is when it is in this way, now just click on that and just drag. And when you drag, you can see it is filling this particular series. It is just filling this particular series. Okay. Okay. So, and you just drag and drop it. So it just fills the series. Now the system has generated the series. Okay. And we have told, we have given the first two numbers because the computers, we need to make it more clear to, for a computer to understand how it has to start and how it has to end. So we said one, one is nothing but uh, the starting point is one. And then two was telling that, you know, it has to increment with plus one. Okay. Then the series was generated. Fine. So now, um, so you can see it as a computer generated. We can trust on this. So when I say uh, manually, when you enter, so how good the data entry person is, there are chances where he is, uh, repeats some number or he skips that number. Okay. So when you are writing the large, large, long, um, uh, that is a huge list of values. So this kind of manual mi mistakes is unavoidable when it has been done with them manually. So no matter it's computer generated, you can rely on this. There'll be no missing and you can see the numbers are being generated in a proper sequence. Fine, clear? This is how you generate this particular series. Yeah. Any questions?
Yeah. Uh, no question, sir. The uh, numbers will go only down, sir, not in the. Uh, you can quality. either drag in uh, both uh, left or else as well as on the right. So you want to have something like say uh, one and say two. Okay, you want to move like this. So you need to select and you can just drag it in this particular. So the option is first two numbers you need to select because the computer needs to know the pattern. So yeah, okay. here it is understanding the pattern is okay. It is starting from one and the uh, second number is two. That means it is going to increment with plus one. So now when I drag this particular thing, so you can just see, so you can just drag it. Okay. Um, so also there is another way to do this particular thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if I want to generate a number, so what we can do is you just um, go to the home. So there we have this something called as a fill series. So under the home tab, under the home tab, okay, we have this thing here called as fill under fill there is something called as series okay you want to fill the series of values i just go here they fill the series so now here, here it says how you want you want the series in the rows or you want in the columns i say i want in the row okay, okay. linear okay. growth okay linear is one up below the other so i can say what is the step value and what is the stop value okay so i say step value is one and say i want to stop till 100 and um, so autofill what is linear sir? Yep. Linear? Linear is one below the other kind of thing. Okay. So you can just say growth. One. So I need to have this. Series okay, growth fill. Need to select this particular one two hundred and then fill. Okay, uh, we'll just I'll just show you some the option called as a flash fill. I I'll just show you that. Okay, uh, this is clear. Okay, now this particular numbers when you're generating, so it is not only this. Okay, I want to generate. Uh, I want to start a series from thousand. Okay, and I want to generate with plus one. I say thousand one. Okay, now see if it is a single digit values, generating is easier when it is four digit or five digit values. Okay, uh, manual typing becomes more more tedious work. Okay, now you just write this kind of things and you can just fill it. So it has started with the increment with plus one. Or I say if the first number is starting from thousand and I want to increment with one zero zero one zero. Fine. So that means here we are starting from thousand and with the increment with plus ten. So that means it will generate a series with plus 10. Okay, so that means we are just giving a pattern by first defining the first two values. We are trying to tell the pattern like how it has to start and how it has to increment. And based on that, when you just drag it, it just fills that particular thing. Fine? Yes. Okay, so that is uh, this particular auto filling of the series. So this can be done for the numbers but not restricted to only to the numbers. It can be like, you know, you're having some kind of a monthly plans. So you can just say January. Fine. So I just say January and then I just drag. So it just, you can see it fills with this particular thing. Okay. Or you just say you want to have a Sunday, Monday or something. So it's understood. Okay. You're trying to generate the days of the week. Okay. So what happens? It just generates it like Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Or if I give a pattern like say SUN, so it is the abbreviated day of the week. So it shows with the abbreviated day of the week. So the same thing with Jan, Feb, March also. Okay, now you say example, I want to generate an alternate month. Say I, I want to have a bi-monthly meet or something. Or like, you know, twice in a month. So I want to say Jan and then I say March. So here I have just defined a pattern telling that, okay, start from Jan and go with uh, increment with two months. So Jan and March. So you can see it goes with Jan, March, May, July, September, okay, every alternate month it is okay. quarterly or something. So you can just. So that means we need to uh, give a kind of a pattern, like you know how exactly you want to do an increment. So that has to be done. Okay. Uh, 
okay yes yeah so this is the auto filling series concept right all clear uh, this can be even like this you know uh, say example i want to have some kind of marks this one i just say subject uh, one i just want to generate the series like say subject 1 2 3 4 5 so you can see here and i say this is for test one i just say fine so you can generate so that means here we have an alphanumerical value still okay. what is happening you are able to auto generate so the excel understands okay fine so i want to retain the text act as it is but there is a number associated to that so number is automatically getting incremented so yeah this is like you know so excel has this kind of artificial intelligence it is sensing like you know what I, what can be the next gen uh, sequence when the user is dragging and based mm -hmm. on that you know it is getting filled. okay yes. so so this can be done okay this is some of the features of your uh, basic features of excel apart from that we do also have a feature called as a flash fill okay so what is this particular flash fill so i'll just show you uh thing. so let me have some data here and uh, let me just copy those data and see uh, just for a few seconds say example i just have some employees data here okay uh, so a, a kind of employees data so now what i want is see when you look into this i have some data like uh, employee code the first name of the employee, the last name of the employee, where this employee is working, under which department is working, which region, which department, what is his earnings, and we have some kind of higher data. So now what I want is, I want to generate his full name. I want to have a full name. So that is full name is nothing but your first name and last name together. How do we write? We write a first name and last name, or a last name first and then with his first name. I want to write last name first. Uh, first, we want to write the last name, then yeah. followed with the uh, first name. So I'll just say it as full name. Okay, I want to generate a full name. So what I will do is I'll just write this particular uh, last name first. What is one of the name? I just say Anderson. Fine. And then I'll mm -hmm. give a space, and then I say the first name is Mickey. M I C K. E Y. Okay, so I have generated this particular what you say is the full name. So it is nothing but your Anderson space me. Now I want to generate the same thing for the rest of the thing. Okay, I want to generate this particular things for the rest of the thing. So here I can just define. Okay, I can just select this particular data and I just drag. Okay, and I can just right click on that particular thing. So we have something called as a flash fill. Yeah, so we have this thing called as a flash fill. So how do we do this particular flash fill is, so what I do is I just select this particular data and I just write this again name. I just say F um, or what we can do is after writing the one pattern, I just select this data and I just drag till where you want this. So I want this to be generated till the end. Fine. I just select this particular thing and I just right click on this. When I right click, so we have something called as a flash fill option or if it is not there so you can just go here and you can see there is a flash fill from this particular home tab as soon as i hit on this flash fill so what happens is it has read the pattern that you have defined okay in the first case i defined a kind of a pattern so excel has understood okay so when you have written this particular full name so it has picked the last name from here and it has generated one space and I, that is i have given a space and then i have given the first name so it has understood the pattern and based on the pattern, it has filled the whole series. Okay, so you don't have to say, write any kind of a formulas or anything. It has been generated, something like this. Okay, so what I did is I just selected the data. I used a control plus E, a control plus E. So that is the shortcut key is, um, say, CTRL plus E. 
fine. So this is for what, sir? Control plus E, shortcut key. So what I need to do is, I just need to, okay. So when you write this first two patterns and then you give, so you can see automatically there is an option here. So we have this auto fill option. So when mm -hmm. I hit on this, it automatically fills it. I just write the first few values. Okay, so I just want to say, it is trying to fill automatically. I just say, okay, both are uh, maybe is it? That is one oh, no, Man. See, I have given the first few values which is following this pattern. So I have taken the last name and then I have taken the first name. Okay. Or you just take this example. I have taken the last name and then I have taken the first name. Fine. Now I want to generate the series with the same pattern. So what I do is I just select this particular data. So where I want to generate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Select it and press Control plus E. So it will automatically fill the series. CTRL plus E. Okay. This is called as a flash fill. Or so you can see if you don't remember this particular formula. So that is I said we have this option called as flash fill. Okay. From this home menu. That is in the home tab. Okay. So in the fill option. So we have this particular thing called as a flash fill. Okay. Or let's like say example, I want to create an email ID. I want to create an email ID okay, for this particular, what you say, the employees. So now when I'm creating the email ID, what I want is, I want, um, say, uh, first character of last name, then followed with the first name, and then at the rate, my company name. Okay, so what I will do, I'll just say, A, I'm taking from the first character of the last name. That is how the corporate email IDs are generally generated. And then uh, I'll just take the first name, M I C. J E Y. Okay, and I say at the rate, um, say company ID. I say so. What was the company name? Is the dot com? Fine. I've created a kind of email ID here. So now what I want is a similar kind of email ID. I want this to be created in the following also. Okay. So in that case, what will we do? Okay, so what we can do is I can just select this particular, sorry, I just will select this particular cell and drag. I just select this and then I go to the fill and I say flash fill. So you can see what happens. It has created an email ID. When you look into this particular pattern, okay, it has taken, okay, the, uh, So if it's not generating, the, we can just write two names. So it is taken the A uh, as prefix and then it is generating. Uh, so we can write multiple patterns here. So I just want to say F mark. At, uh, what do you say? Uh, company ID dot. So you can just give some patterns here and I can just select say flash fill. F Mary, uh, O Aiden, you can see here. Okay, so all the email ID, what has been generated, they are following this kind of a pattern. So what is the pattern? They are taking the first alphabet of the last name, A, F, M, O, all these things. Okay, and then joining with the actual first name and then uh, uh, a constant value at the rate company.com. It is generating automatically. See, it is a gym at the company.com. S, okay, Elora. Fine, it is R, a uh, tree word. Okay, here it is uh, Taylor, Rebecca. Fine, here it is uh, O, Aiden. So it is uh, F, Mark. So again, there is a F, Mark. 
So now you want to generate email IDs for all in this particular pattern. See, just imagine if I have to manually do this. Okay. Uh, so it becomes really a very tedious work to do this particular thing. So here I'm just selecting and I'll just use a shortcut key, control E, or I'll just use this particular flash fill option. So this will generate this particular sequence for all. So I'll just hit on this flash fill or say control plus E. So it's just generating for almost for everyone. So you can see they're just following a pattern here. So the pattern that they are following is, so when it is this one, so it is kind of T Melinda. select this everything because um, so when there is little complex things you can just give some kind of four five uh, settings and then you can do it that is four five patterns so it will try to make it more clear in understanding the pattern control plus e is generating so first it will read the pattern based on which how this email id is being created and based on that it is going to be generated Yes, sir. Okay. Now we'll see like how do we do some kind of a basic calculations from this particular Excel. Okay. So now let us have some values over here. Uh, let me have some numbers here. I want to find the sum of this particular values. I want to find the sum of this particular values. If you want to find the sum of this particular values, so what is that I will do? I'll just say is equal to sum. Okay. And see, like, you know, since I want to do the addition of this particular value, so uh, these values are there in a cell. I say this is in B2. So whereas uh, this is cell is, uh, this value is in B3, B4, and things. It has to sum up all these things and it has to find the total. Okay. So if I have to calculate this particular total, so one way is I can just say is equal to 76 uh, plus uh, say 56. So if I write all those particular things, so it will generate this particular result. Okay. Um, so if I say plus, I say 56 uh, plus uh, 65 uh, plus uh, say 78, I say plus um, 5, plus uh, 65 plus 78 plus 45 fine so when i run this particular thing i'm getting the output 531 fine but you can see here i manually written what was the value of this particular mass okay now what happens is see tomorrow i do some corrections over here oh wait, this is not seven it is it is actually say 70. when i do this particular correction i expect this particular formula also has to be auto corrected in this case i need to manually go and then do the rectification only then it happens okay so then okay what is the use of having this particular computerized so in the computers we say excel has this feature called as auto recalculations now if you want to get this particular thing so what i need to do is when i'm doing this particular calculation will not refer to the values of that will refer to the cell of that particular uh, okay uh, data where it is present so that means instead of right, referring this as 76 i'll refer to the name of the cell so what is the name of the cell? It is B2. I want to refer to that one. So what I'll do is I'll just say is equal to, I can refer to B2. That means that value comes back. So now I can just say is equal to 
uh, B2 plus say B3. Okay, when you write this, it'll do the sum of the values and it'll go. The same way I can just say B2 plus B3 plus B4 plus B11. So it'll go, it'll sum up all the values and then it'll try to get. So example, I say is equal to this. Okay, when you hit a plus sign and after equal to sign, you click on any of the cell, the cell address will be copied. Fine. Now again, when I do like this, when I have this particular large values, so you can see it is so difficult and things, okay. Um, you're getting the output, 594 is perfect. But what happens is, so here I'm just calculating only the marks of 10 subjects. Just imagine I have some thousands of sales data and I want to sum up all those particular sales values. So then this particular formula, you can just imagine how complex it is going to be. Okay, and when you have this kind of a complex things, there are possible where you have repeated some particular cell address or you have skipped some cell address. Now, since I want to do this particular summing, which is in a single range, so I can make use of something called as a functions to do this particular calculation. Since I wanted to do the sum of this, so what I will do is I'll just say is equal to that means when you start doing any kind of calculation, it has to always start with the equal to sign. I'll just use this particular function called as sum. Okay, okay, and always a function will have an open parenthesis, so that means it is ready to accept some inputs from the user. I'll just say sum of, I'll just select this particular range of data, fine, and I'll just do the closing of this. So, and when you press enter, I got the same 594, but you can see the formula is so clear, okay, telling that okay, you're trying to do this values of range which is starting from B2 to B11, so that is. This is nothing but B2 and this is nothing but your B11. Okay, so when the data is in the range, you just select that. So with the colon, it just gives a start and the end of the range and it will take up all the values what is there in that range and it will do the calculation what is given, that is a sum. It is doing the sum and then. And then you can see what about the auto recalculation. So when I do any changes here, automatically that gets implemented. So auto recalculation happens automatically since it is referring to not the value it is referring to the cell address and whenever you do any changes in the cell automatically it does a recalculation so i have a doubt in this one yeah. yes for hmm. you yes yeah, sir uh, in case i want i want to calculate uh, somewhere between b2 and b5 and again start with b8 to b11 so is that oh. possible yes 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 so if you're breaking this particular range, so in that case, what you do is just say, I want to do the sum of B2 to say B, okay, say B6, comma. I'll use a comma as a separator and then select another two. Okay, maybe, uh, okay, thanks. Okay, so if it is an alternate, so if the data is uh, placed not in a range, then you can select individual cell and then you can do it. But when the, generally, like, you know, when you're doing this particular summing and all, so the data will be in the range, so you can just do a start to end. So, but again, as you said, you want to uh, take some kind of alternate values, you, can, you have this option. So where I'm using a comma separator, then select another range. So comma is, okay, alternate values, or colon is for the range of values. Okay, so got it. Sure. So next is, okay, fine. I want to find the average. Okay, um, so of this. So what I do is, um, so okay. so in that case, so we have this particular function called as average. So average of this particular range of data. Okay. So now what happens, it automatically gives me the arithmetic mean. So it has summed up, divided by the total number of subjects and says this is the average. So can I come again with this one? Uh, fine. So you want to calculate this particular average I instead of sum, I just give the function called as average. So, is it necessary to give a complete word like average or just AVG? So, to find it out. Actually, the Excel, what the function is given is a full word called as A V E R E A G E. Uh, okay. But generally, like you know, it is like human beings, they want an easier way to do it. And Microsoft says, no problem, I'll go with the end users. Okay. Um, so, thing. so, here if I say AVG, Okay, see, there is no formula called as AVG. There is no function called as AVG, I, but I have written as AVG. Okay, and then what happens is when I press enter, so it says, oh, there is a typo error. So generally when you do a WhatsApping, so when you write some words, you can see automatically correction happens or 
okay, you give a half of the word, the autofill happens, you know, a similar kind of thing. It says, we found a typo error in the formula. So there is nothing called as AVG, but I understood, okay, the end user, he is expecting something like this. He wanted to actually write something called as average. Okay. We found a typo error in the formula and tried to correct it. And Excel has corrected this AVG into this particular thing. Okay. So now it says, do you want to accept this correction? If I say yes, so this AVG will be changed to average and then you will get it. Okay. If I say no, that says it goes ahead with this. I say no, I want to go for it. Yes. So you can see automatically Excel types it. Okay. So that means, so we can say AVG, no problem. Uh, but actually AVG is not a function. I just select this and I just select this particular range. So, so it just gives a typo error and says to correct it. So yeah, there is no AVG function, it is average. So good practice, right? Follow uh, average uh, in Excel. Because most of the languages and all these things, they use AVG, AVG, and we are used to AVG for average. So no problem. So auto understand okay. okay. fine so that is there now you want to enter some marks over here for the other rest of the subject for all the tests yep okay but can this happen even for subtraction and multiplication so we have we have a, so generally subtracting is a subtracting between the two numbers okay so we do a, 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 a minus manually whereas the product we have the function called as a product and I will answer. Okay. So now what I want is I want to fill the numbers over here. I want some numbers. See, right now I'm just doing some kind of a practice work. For practice, I don't want to uh, again type. Okay, we people like you know, sorry, we don't have a, a time to write A V E R A G E. So then I don't have a time to write these numbers. I want the machine to generate this. Okay. So like how we uh, bird we use the rand function. Remember. So here also I can use a function. I can use a rand function, okay, or I can use a random between. I want to generate number between a specific range, fine. I want this particular marks to be generated a random number. Uh, bottom is one minimum value and maximum value. So that means I want to generate the numbers between 100. What I have done is I have selected the data and I said, okay, minimum is one and maximum is 100. Generate the numbers between this range. I press enter, control plus enter after this, and we can see the whole data is being generated here. So, what is the short form you use for that one? Random, random between, right? Random, yes. Uh, used rand between. Rand between. Rand between minimum value and the maximum value. Fine. Okay. So I just generated like this. So what is that I did? I just say is equal to rand between. I just said what is the minimum value and the, what is the maximum value. And then hold on the control key and press enter on the selected range. It generated the number randomly. One thing what happens is when you have generated randomly, you do any task. I just say is equal to sum of this particular range of data. Okay. So it has calculated, but whatever the changes you do anywhere, any this one, you can see this is getting reevaluated. Fine. So there is a recalculation what is happening. So now the see what happens, whatever the formulas you have written, it does a recalculation. Now I want to convert this. I want to remove this particular formula. I want to make this as values. Okay. If I want to make this as values, what I will do is, okay. Uh, I just right click. I just say, copy. okay. I'm just copying this particular formula and I'll go to the paste. Okay. In the paste, we have something called as a paste special values. In this particular formula, I have something called as a paste values. Okay. So when I hit on this particular paste value, so you can copy this particular formulas and whatever the values are there, that is going to be pasted. So you can see now the formula is removed. You do any changes that is not getting affected. Got it? Any questions? Oh, sir. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you can do that. Oh, no, I did not get. Okay. Okay. Fine. Uh, see what happens is when I 
write this particular formula. Okay. I use like rand between, right, sir? Yeah. yeah. Rand between 1 to 100. So that means mm -hmm. I want. Okay. The first thing what I'm doing is I'm selecting the data on which I want to generate this number. Okay. I'm selecting the data. Just some sound like. It's good. Uh, somebody has. Um, somebody has muted. I'll do one thing. I'll mute all. Yeah. So I don't know who's typing that so hardly on the keyboard. Okay. I'll mute it. Okay. Uh, see, like uh, what I want is, I want to generate this particular number. So I just select this particular thing. And then I just say is equal to rand between. Okay. So that means it is, I want to generate a random number between a particular series. So I just need to say what is the minimum value and what is the maximum value between which you want to generate this random number. So random number, I just say I want to have a numbers between 1 to 100. Fine. I just close this. Now I want to fill this the whole series. I want to fill this particular whole series. So in that case, what I will do is I'll just press the control and I'll press the enter. I just hold on the control key and then press the enter. So when I hold on the control key and press the enter on all the selected cells, the formula will be implemented. So you can see in all the cells, the formula is implemented. Now, when you have any formula, okay, see whatever the changes you do anywhere, any this one, so you can see there that particular uh, data has been recalculated or the random numbers have been regenerated with some another new random numbers. You can see there. You can see there is a number which has been generated randomly. Because there is a formula, I need to remove this particular formula. So what I will do is I'll just select the data. I'll just right click, copy. I have copied this particular data. Then what I will do is generally we go to the paste. We'll just paste it to the other location. So I say I want in the same location, but in the pasting, we have something called as a paste special. We have a different features of pasting it. So in the paste special, we have this particular thing called as paste values. So when I hit on this, it will copy this particular data and will paste only the values. There is no formulas now. So you can see there is no formula. There is no rand between. So now you do any changes in your sheet. So you can see there is no auto recalculation happening. Okay. Fine. Yeah. Okay. That was like, how do you generate this particular auto generating of the numbers? There is one way to do in that way. So there is another way to do with this particular uh, space special. So I'll just show you. I'll just say is equal to random between say one to hundred. Fine. I have generated this random numbers. Now I don't want to copy, then go to the paste special paste values. So I just select this. You can see on the borders, then it is four sided arrow. Okay. So when you move the pointer on that, you can see there's a four sided arrow. Now we'll right click. I'll right click and move that particular thing and come back into this particular thing. So what it does is when I right click and move, so that means, okay, you're copying and then you're trying to paste. So when you're pasting, automatically you get a shortcut menu here. So how you want to paste? So you want to paste with the formats or you want to paste with the formulas. I say, I want to copy here only with the values. I can, we can select this option, copy here as a values only. So when I hit on this, so you can see now it has pasted only with the values. This is a different, uh, another way to uh, do the pay special features. It's in the same place. Uh, I, doing... What I did is I just moved here and I just get back into the same place. So then it pr prompted me telling that how you want to paste the status. Okay. No, sir. Uh, what I'm asking is uh, the same numbers which we did like uh, ran random yeah. between one to hundred. Yeah. There was a uh, value like a formula. Yeah. Uh, After what, look, no formula. Uh, I have removed the formula. And now you removed the formula, like. So how I removed it is one is copy and paste special. The another one is like this. Let me write the formula first. Say start to hundred. Okay. So I have regenerated. Uh, now you can see every cell has a formula. So what happens is when you do any changes, that particular thing gets recalculated. So I don't want this particular recalculation happening. I mm -hmm. just wanted an easy way to have some random numbers. I got it, but I want only the values of it. So one thing is, you can okay. like, take copy and thing. 
the other click is you can right click on the border okay i'll right click on the borders i'll just move out and then i'll try to move in and when i paste it says how you want to paste it i say i want to paste only with values okay even your people are working with excel so they always prefer the shortest way easiest way to do all this particular task yeah this is a short this is another way okay where the excel has provided this kind of features where i can remove the formulas fine okay this will be useful like uh, the random between is useful to practice yeah practicing purpose just like a rank function used in word the mm. same way i want to do, generate some random numbers so i just okay. this particular thing here okay so instead of manually typing i've just done this particular thing yeah to uh, remove that uh, random between uh, we use this copy, copy paste here. yeah in the paste we use a paste special or right click on this border and yes, then i got it now not left click right click okay. okay then okay now i have this particular marks for different five different test and i have calculated the total and average for test one now i want to do a similar calculation for the rest of the test so now I, again i have to say is equal to sum of this range is equal to average of this range then again i need to repeat this and another four times or eight times and thing so what i will do is since i have already done this okay so now i can even copy the formulas so what i do is in the right bottom again we have this particular plus sign which changes to black color on the right bottom you can see on this i have selected this okay and i just focus on this particular box exactly so it changes to black color plus sign now i just click and i just drag okay now when i drag what happens is you can see the formula has been generated so here it was referring to this range of data it, here you can see it was referring to d okay when i moved it okay so when i have shifted this particular copy of the formula from a column wise the reference also has changed column wise okay so you can see here it is finding the average of c series okay so average of d series average of p series this is average of the series and so on one got it and so okay this is again the features of excel so if i have to write this particular same formula again and again which is going in the sequence either is vertically or horizontally so you just write it once and just drag it okay so example i want to know what is the total marks in all the five tests i just say here i say okay so i just say is equal to sum okay sum of this particular five test marks i got this value okay now i want to apply this for all the 10 subjects so i just click like this and i just drag so it's a total of all the 10 subjects you can see so when i just dragged it the formula reference also is changing okay parallelly So what does the bracket indicate for here? Uh, sum and bracket is it? Yes. Yeah. See, always like you know, when you use any function, function is working based on the input. So it'll first take some input from the user and then works. So when you use any function, the function will be uh, okay. The okay, and this is the input values we say the parameters we call it as that has to be defined in the brackets only. Okay. So if I'm using any function. Okay, and then you're passing the parameters. See, it is like a different shape. If I give like this, sum B7, so it will become a new name. SUM B7, it becomes a different name altogether. Okay, so when I use a function, always the function will have a parenthesis. You can see in the syntax also, it says there is a parenthesis, then it is taking some numbers. So it is like this, madam. I want to find the addition of uh, 5 plus uh, 2 plus 3. I just say is equal to sum, open the bracket. I'll just say two plus, sorry, two comma three. So that means it'll do the addition of two and three. And it just shows me this. Fine. Is there more room? Got it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So the same way, like you know, here it is a static value. Here I'm referring to the another cell. So instead of writing this two and three separately, I just say two and three here, and then I want to do what is the values on that cell. I just say is equal to sum of 
I need to use a bracket. I say it has to do the addition of this and this. So two plus three is five. But you can see you do any changes here automatically it gets. Mm. So if I give here, it is going to be more of a static value. So if I'm referring to a cell, okay, it is referring to that cell. In that cell, if you do any changes, the formula gets automatically recalculated. This thing makes things more dynamic. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Any questions, any doubts till here? No, sir. This is clear. All is fine. Okay. Um, 